before I go, I mean, what I always do when I'm going to a body of water, it doesn't really matter where it's at in the country. First thing, I want to know if I'm fishing muddy water. I want to know if it's clear. I want to know, you know, if there's any grass, does it have cypress tree? I want to know everything about this lake, if it's rock, whatever. And then I basically throw this bait in three colors. I throw it in either a black and blue, I throw it in a chartreuse and white, or I throw it in a green pumpkin of some kind. And uh, if the only other thing I might do is around a chartreuse and white, if the water's kind of got a stain but not real clear, I may just throw straight white. But those are the basic colors I'm going to have everywhere I go. I mean, I really, honestly, I don't have any other colors in my box. The only thing I do is I may change blade colors. I may have a chartreuse and white with a gold blade on it, and then I'll have the same chartreuse and white with a silver on it. And uh, I'll mix that up just a little bit depending on the kind of flash that I'm wanting off that blade and what the watercolor is. But like you know the different like i say if it's a grass lake if it's if it's got cypress trees and that's another thing i'm going to get into later about getting around heavy cover um i didn't i don't have any with me i, I didn't realize till i got here that i'd forgotten them but one of the things that we're starting to do is throw one with a weed guard more and it's pretty amazing where you can put that bait what you can do with that bait and i mean the amount of, it's, it's really amazing to throw it into a tree with the weed guard on it. The bait's actually that weedless and to fish it through there where you might normally would fish a jig, where you might normally would swim a jig through, uh, fishing it off of poles, piers, different things and stuff. It's really amazing to go down a stretch, throwing a swim jig or something you've always thrown on that stretch and then to come back to it and put a chatter bait in places you couldn't normally put it without the weed guard and the amount of, the amount of bites you're gonna get. I mean, it's a great, great reaction bait. And uh, I mean, with the being able to put it in the cover, that's the deal. Here's my trailer choices. I like to throw a rocket crawl. I don't know how many of you knew, know what the rocket crawl is, but I love it. And I, I mean, I designed that bait basically for a chatterbait. I like to flip it and stuff, but I basically did the bait because I wanted a great trailer for a... Who manufactures that? Berkeley. Um, I, wanted, uh, I wanted it for a great trailer. Well, I put the antenna on it, the antennas on it the way I did and everything to give that much more vibration, that much more movement on that trailer. And it still doesn't make the bait float too high as you know as you're retrieving it i like to throw a twin tail grub on the back of it swimming cinco swimming fluke junior i really love to throw it on the back of it especially if i'm if i'm trying to duplicate something in a shed pattern or something in a bluegill pattern or something like that 90 percent of the time that's what i'm going to have on the back of it then when i'm trying to go into the crawl type pattern and everything it's going to be the twin tail or it's going to be the rocket crawl this is the main thing I can't stand. I know y'all can come up later and look at this closer. Can you see that chatterbait? It's got split rings between the blade and the head. That's what I think about it. So, the way the patent laws are, chatterbait, Z-Man, are the only ones that are allowed to physically put the blade to the hook where it comes out of the head, the line tie. They're the only ones basically that are, you know, by patent laws. But we all modify our own stuff, you know. So the first thing I do is I cut those off. And if it's a black nickel hook, see I've got two different hooks here. This is not a black nickel. I can take a pair of pliers, I can take a dot, pair of dikes, I can back that hook open just a little bit. I can get a blade in on it, back down, clamp down. Black nickel, on the other hand, brittle. So, there we go. That bottle right there, I take that eye and I hold it in that flame and I heat it up. 
heat that black nickel hook up. That punch right there is a perfectly sharp, but it's round. It's perfectly round. I didn't shine that in your eye, did I? Okay. And, uh, and so I'll take that hook. I'll get it shine. I'll get it heated up. I'll get it glowing pretty good. I'll lay it on that piece of wood right there. You can see the little black rings where I've been popping. Boy, I'm shaky. Where I've been pop, where I lay that eye down on that edge and, and stick that punch in it. I'll take those, di or those lineman pliers there and I'll pop it open, I'll get it open. I'll have my blade sitting there ready. So as soon as I open that thing up enough, I'll get that blade on there and take those same pliers while I got them out. That's why I'm using them as a hammer. While that hook has still got heat on it and I get that blade on it, I just take the plier pliers and I close it back up. Try to do it as perfectly round. Don't mash it flat. Roll it as, you, roll it as you're putting it back on there. By doing that, that puts that blade right to the head. Now I'm gonna tell you why I want it to the head. Listen, you can't hear it very good, but that blade is it's as it's swimming coming through the water. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.